A huge thank you to patron Rafe Zero Humor Singer for suggesting today's video topic. If you want to suggest a topic for next Wednesday's Name Explain video, all you have to do is support Name Explain on Patreon for one dollar a month. Find out more by visiting patreon.com forward slash Name Explain, which will be linked down below. Anyway, a key point of contention between the USA and the majority of the globe in regards to language and communication is how to say what the date is. The majority of the world, including most of Europe and South America, as well as parts of Asia, Africa, and Australia, New Zealand. Order the date by day, month, then year. An example, the day this video is going live on is the 2nd of October 2024. Here you can see that the day is said first, then the month, then the year. Most of the people living in the land of the free, meanwhile, would not use this dating order, but instead say October the 2nd, 2024. This is the go to date order in the USA. Month, day, year. Yet these are not the only two ways in which the date is ordered. In many East Asian countries like China and Japan, the date is said the other way around with year, month, day. So in Japan, today is actually 2024, October the 2nd. And according to Wikipedia, there's also a small group of nations which includes Latvia, Kazakhstan, Nepal and Turkmenistan that go year, day, month. This seems super odd, so I actually checked an old Latvian newspaper to see if there's any truth to it all, and lo and behold, there it is. Absolutely wild. And for the record, I'm going to be using newspapers a lot as references to date layouts in this video. They are far from perfect as papers are relatively recent inventions, but they're a great way to easily see how dates are and were being written across the globe in the past. All these different ways to order the day, month, and year actually have a name. Collectively, they are referred to as a date, Endianness. Yes, Endianness is a really weird word, and its origins are equally weird. The term has its origins in the Jonathan Swift book Gulliver's Travels, a 1726 fantasy book in which explorer Lemiel Gulliver travels to strange different lands. On these travels, he comes across two groups of people, known as the Lilliput people and the Belafusco people. A big point of contention between these two peoples is what end a boiled egg should be cracked open from. The Lilliput people like to crack their eggs open from the smaller end and are known as Little Endian. The Belafusco, meanwhile, being the mad lads that they are, insisted on cracking them open from the larger end, gaining the title of Big Endian. Through this novel and these characters and their boiled egg preferences, the concept of Endianness and different Endians entered the wider conversation and it came to be used in relation to how to order things and if they should be ordered from smallest to largest or vice versa. It really picked up use in the world of computing and how to order computer data, but made its way into the conversation around date order too. The date order used by the majority of the world going day, month, year is known as the Little Endian Date Order. This is because you start with the smallest unit, a day, and then work up to the largest of a year. The order used in East Asia of year, month, day, however, is known as the Big Endian Date Order, as you start with the largest unit and work downwards. The date order used in the USA of month, day, then year, however, is known as Middle Endian, simply because it sits in between the other two formats. The year, day, month order used in Latvia and the like, meanwhile, doesn't seemingly have a name. Let's call it Big Little Endian, as it goes from day to year. The Middle Endian format used in the USA seems to upset a lot of people, though it's worth mentioning that the USA is not the only place it is used. Parts of Canada noticeably use it too, and apparently the Philippines does as well, but I also found conflicting info on that one. If you're watching from the Philippines, please let me know what the situation is over there. The USA seems to be conclusively the only nation that uses it as their primary date order. The reason it seems to anger so many people is because it just seems so darn illogical. Little and big Endian make huge degrees of sense, as you're going from either the smallest to largest or largest to smaller units of time respectively. Middle Endian meanwhile starts with the middle unit in regards to size, then goes to the smallest and then the largest. It just seems super nonsense sensical to go in this order, and I feel the anger towards is only exemplified by the fact it is so linked with the USA. Now, I love the USA, and I feel they've done some incredible things on the global stage, and their contributions to the world are huge. But it cannot be denied that to many people, the caricature of what this country is and how it acts has led to the nation as a whole being the butt of many jokes, and has made them something of a punching bag to the wider world. If you are watching from the States and didn't know about this reputation your country has, then I'm really 
sorry to break this news to you. Uh, like many Americans pretend to be Canadian when they travel so they don't get the American stigma attached to them. I also found out that this concept of pretending to be from somewhere else while traveling is referred to as flag jacking, which is a really fun term. But going back to date orders, I feel it's this link with the USA, as well as the image the USA has on the global stage to many, as to why so many people feel this dating order is kind of stupid. Uh, yet this anger towards the middle Indian dating system really doesn't seem that fair. And that's because while America's often blamed for popularizing this order, they actually adopted it from none other than the British. Like the USA, the UK doesn't have the greatest global reputation at the moment either. Yet despite all the jokes in the nation I call home, no one rarely mocks us for creating this date order. The middle Indian dating order of month, day, year does seemingly derive from the UK. And we were using it for quite some time seemingly. Once again going back to the newspapers, a copy of the London based newspaper of Reynolds Illustrated News from 1930 has a date on it reading August 17th 1930. This shows us that the UK was happily using this format less than a hundred years ago, but as mentioned earlier, papers might not be the best evidence of date order throughout history. Even today, many UK based newspapers still use the month day year order. What this shows us is that this system was in place in the UK, and it was seemingly a product of this nation. As looking into older papers from Europe shows us they were using the little Indian system of day, month, year. A 1917 issue of a French newspaper named Le Petit Parisien shows the date going day, month, year, reading the 16th of October 1917. It also mentions the day of the week too, but where the day goes is a whole topic unto itself. Likewise, the cover of an old Swedish newspaper called it Dagen from 1896 also uses the little Indian format too, reading the 17th of December 1896. What this shows us is that while continental Europe was happily using the little Indian format, the UK was using the middle Indian format of its own concoction. And annoyingly, we seem to have no idea as to why this difference in dating order occurred. The Gregorian calendar, which is used by the majority of the world today, was introduced by Pope Gregory the 13th in 1582. Many Many Catholic countries followed their pope and adopted this calendar on the spot, though it took a little longer in some other places. The UK and its colonies at the time only adopted it in 1752. It could have been due to this hesitation in adopting it as to why they put their own spin on it and ordered the date, month, day, year, to make it a tad more unique to them. The UK has a long history of wishing to differentiate itself from the rest of the continent it is a part of. Other countries adopted the Gregorian calendar way later down the line, with China and Russia not using it until 1912 and 1916 respectively. What this meant is that by the mid 18th century, the UK and its claims around the world, including what would become the USA, were using the Middle Indian format, while other parts of the world and Europe in particular were using the Little Indian format. Eventually for some unknown reason, the UK would fall in line with the rest of Europe and adopt the Little Indian format too. And by this point in history, the USA was free from British rule and doing their own thing. They did not do what Britain did anymore, so instead of also going to the little Indian format, stuck with the middle Indian format the UK gave them in the first place. Once again, we are not entirely sure why the USA held onto this format. I like to think it derives from the USA's early sentiment of being as different from the British as possible. Like how the UK has a history of not following Europe's lead, the USA in its early days did everything it could to be different from their former rulers. This is why they gave their own currency a unique name, and even why they changed many of the spellings of the language they adopted from the British. And the middle Indian date format is not wrong by any means. The 300 million plus people in the USA use it all the time and they get by just fine. Though while it's not wrong, it's super confusing at times, especially when American dates travel the globe. The amount of times I've seen a poster for an upcoming movie and not know what date it's coming out on because I can't figure out if they're using the little or middle Indian format is too many times times to count at this point. Like I'm sure 13 year old Patrick thought Iron Man was coming out on the 5th of February or something. And then sometimes you have to put your age into a website and you realise it's in the wrong format. It's, it, it's super frustrating. But what's really interesting is that while most dates are put into their accepted order in different parts of the world, particularly noteworthy dates in the USA often maintain the middle Indian format even when they are being talked about 
outside of the states. In example, and sorry for taking a really dark turn here, one of the most infamous dates in US history, the 11th of September 2001, is referred to commonly as September the 11th, or just 9-11 around the world, even in places that don't use the middle ending date format. Like here in the UK, we don't call it 11-9 or anything like that. But what's also really weird is how one of the most celebrated dates in US history is talked about. The USA's Independence Day is commonly referred to as simply the 4th of July, as that's the day it took place on in 1776. Even in the USA itself, this day is called the 4th of July, which of course uses the little endian format. There's something incredibly ironic about the fact that the most American day of the year very rarely uses the most American date format. We ultimately don't know why the 4th of July is referred to like this, as opposed to July 4th, which would bring it much more in line with the American date order. My initial personal theory was because when the USA achieved independence, they were still under heavy British influence, so were using the British date order when this date became a big deal. But as we know already, the British were actually using the middle Indian format during their time in the USA, so that's my theory out the window. One Quora post on the subject just labels it as an exception to the rule. Rules is ultimately what this video boils down to, and the USA is a nation well known for establishing its own rules, even if those rules buck the trend of the wider world. This following of its own rules is even seen with how the nation chooses to say and write the dates of the year. And of course, they are more than happy to break their own rules too, especially when it comes to their own birthday seemingly. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.